Hi, everybody. Welcome to our latest episode of Behind the Curtain. I'm Greg Hyland with The Sound on Stage. Today, we are going behind the curtain with the cast of Gunmetal Blues, opening next week, April 4th, at Key City Public Theater in Port Townsend. Uh, we've got a cast of, well, the cast is three people, plus uh, an onstage orchestra. And we're also joined by the show's director, Brendan Chambers. And Brendan, I will hand it off to you first, and just kind of a little bit of an introduction. Then we'll go around the horn. We'll do Mark, second Mark there at the piano, and then Jeffrey and Krista, and talk about what your role is in the show and um, you know who you're playing. And then we'll get to talk about the show itself. So Brendan, over to you. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brendan Chambers, and I am the director of the show. And I'm Mark Robbie. Uh, I am playing Buddy Toupee, the lounge pianist at the Red Eye Lounge. And I also get to cameo into the detective story as a few other people. I've already got some questions for you, Mark. So we'll get we'll get back to you. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Simmons. I'll be playing the private eye, Sam. Galahad. Galahad. <laughs> Which is Galahad. Yes. <laughs> I'm Krista Holbrook, and I will be playing the blonde. Okay, so I'm looking at a bunch uh, at you guys, and and Mark, uh, Buddy Toupee, obviously, you know, with all due respect, you like me have no hair on the top of your head, so that's you know, and Krista, I look at you, and you're not blonde, nope. so these uh, are the, the <laughs> so I'm seeing some things right there. This is this so. To me, it sounds like it's a musical noir mystery. I love noir. I love musicals. It seems like something that um, uh, is right up my alley personally. And it sounds like a super fun show. And Brendan, I'm going to start with you. With How did this show come to Key City? And how did you, as a director, uh, align with it? Sure. Um, so actually, one of our fellow actors slash artists who work with us sometimes, Alan Fitzpatrick, mm. he was in the, the cast 30 years ago to this day, to this year. And we, our artistic director, Denise Winter, you know, we're looking for different musicals, specific musicals that would work in our venue because we're a pretty small venue. So looking for, for um, musicals that have a small cast. And he recommended she take a look at it. So after she read it, she passed it along to me. And Chris is also part of our staff and she read it as well. And we thought, okay, this is, this is an interesting piece. I think we could probably, you know, pull this off. And yeah, so that's kind of how it came to our theater. And actually I just heard that Alan um, just talked to the Craig Bomler. The composer. The composer. Um, and they had a little conversation about like, oh, I'm so glad, you know, you brought this play to Key City. It's so awesome that, you know, my show's, you know, still alive and being done today, you know, 30 years later. Um, but yeah, a little bit about the show. It's just what you said. It's a detective noir musical. Um, it's pretty fast paced. The music is beautiful. It moves really, really quickly. Um, and there's a detective that's trying to figure out who this blonde person is that that he's been um, assigned to find. So you kind of follow his story uh, throughout. We have a piano player on stage throughout the play who not only plays the lounge singer in the red eye, but also kind of acts as a narrator slash, um, as Mark said, cameos for other smaller parts uh, throughout the, the show. And there's also like little Easter eggs throughout the show that if you were listening and pay attention really hard, you can probably figure out uh, what's going on. So it's really, really fun. <laughs> well, uh, Jeffrey, so you're the private eye. Uh, yes. have, did, did you model the, because of pri in, in these kind of noir mystery sorts of things, the, the private eye is a pretty important role, obviously. Did you model your your character after any of, you know, maybe the, uh, whether it's Mike Hammer or, uh, you know, any of these guys that uh, are, are part of these mysteries, or did you just kind of develop the character uh, on your own? That's a great question. I I literally, uh, I like how it, the instructions read that to play it straight, because I think that's it's really important that you're not hamming it, because there are so many examples of detectives throughout stage and theater and, 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 and art, really. 
Um, of course, um, I we were talking about um, Denzel Washington, who did some um, some detective shows, and then of course uh, Humphrey Bogart. And mm -hmm. sort of, yeah, it's it's nice when the, the it, it's so written in such a way that you can just really speak the lines and, and let them you know say what they have to say, and it really carries through. So, and of course with uh, all these wonderful my my co stars doing their job because her voice is amazing and her work is good. And, you know, you've got, of course, uh, Mark out back there banging it out. So it's, yeah, it's, and of course, her director really, he pulls out all those little nuances and points them out. And so it, it's, it was a real collaboration. It was, I don't, I, I don't want to say it's something I did on my own. I really felt like I, I once you can find the voice and then you hear the other voices, it just starts to, to sort of um, germinate. And okay. And, Grow from there. Well, and and Krista, the kind of the femme fatale is the other noir mystery role that that you know usually is the uh, which is I guess what you're kind of playing. I mean, I always think uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is 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 a film noir, a mystery like that, and you know yeah. Jessica Rabbit. There is the 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 femme fatale. Same. So so kind of a similar question to you um, that I asked Jeffrey is, did you? look back at any sort of any, any of these old mysteries uh, and, and model your character after any of those? Or did you also develop this role kind of collaboratively with the group? I would say mostly um, collaboratively with the group uh, because the, um, the story, the book is very intricate with lots of little Easter eggs uh, planted throughout. Um, I think it's definitely going to be a production that people will want to see more than once because um, once they start to realize maybe what's going on, that their their mind might be a little bit blown and they'd want to go back and see it in a different uh, perspective. perspective. Um, but I would say for the most part, um, it was a collaborative effort. And without giving too much away about what I did use um, for my inspirations, I will just say that it was a lot of um, classic femme fatale noir, noir movies um, that I did watch um, kind of just to get the essence of uh, the character. Nice. Okay. And Mark on the, on the piano side. Uh, so have you been, had a role before where you've played on stage kind of live while you've been performing before? Actually I have, there is a play called Souvenir that is about Florence Foster Jenkins, who it's a character based on a real person in the 1930s and 40s who's tried to sing opera in recital. Mm -hmm. it, it loves the high, high soprano stuff. Uh, Meryl Streep did a movie based on. I remember that. Character. Yep, yep. So there's two two actor play. Basically, there's the actor who plays her, and then there's a guy who the play suggests was her pianist for 11 years. It, there's some liberties taken with the historic elements of that, but he's. There's actually some funny parallels between that character and this one. Both really wanted to be serious classical musicians and ended up in a piano bar and have a certain amount of maybe lingering bitterness about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love to do it because it incorporates all of the things that I do, the playing, the singing, the acting. I, it's, it's a lot of fun. And and to perform this now, you, it's obviously a small cast. Now, I'd, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention the uh, the Red Eye Lounge musicians that are uh, accompanying you as well, which are Vinny Onepo and Jane Morrison on woodwinds, Isaac Jasinski on bass, and Rachel Doan on percussion. So uh, they're joining you as well. So And live music, is, for me, is always preferred over uh, pre-recorded tracks and and things like so um especially when it's done done well and and uh you know my experience with uh uh key city is that everything there is done well but it and, and it's a small space though so my that's the kind of leads into my next question is are there challenges maybe brendan this is a question to you can start out with and and the actors then after that uh what are the challenges of of putting this together in a space the size of Key City. Yeah, well, talking about the band, um, we couldn't stage. So they're off stage, um, just off stage. So you don't actually see them playing. 
Um, there is a moment that you might see the saxophone player come out to a cameo, <laughs> but who's we'll see if that if that comes to fruition. Um, and <laughs> but yeah, this space there we don't have a like backstage that's right behind you know the upstage, and we don't have a wing stage right. All we have is a wing slash our backstage, which is stage left. And so when it comes to creating different exits and entrances, you have to get creative. So that's when, you know, I worked with the set designer and was like, you know, let's try to find a way to create the set where there's different, you know, there's there's places where we can come from because this play moves, you know, even though it's it, it takes place in the Red Eye Lounge, um, the audience is going to use their imagination. We, you know, with the switch of light transition, we're at the we're at the Red Eye Lounge, and then all of a sudden we're in the detective's office, and then we're on the street, and then we're somewhere else. So, um, being creative with where people are coming from is definitely a challenge, but it's also a fun challenge because you get to kind of, you know, think creatively of how we're, you're going to make it make sense to where. The traffic pattern of where everybody's coming from so yeah okay and, and let's go up to uh, krista and jeffrey so working in a and in, in working on a uh, a piece with a lot of movement um in that is is that um are there other challenges there to make sure that you know obviously there's you rehearse the blocking and, and you know where you are all the time but um how does that come together with uh with that process of of something that moves around in different places like that. Yeah, um, I I would like to say that for me that um, the intimacy of our theater is what I hold in the most high regard because you get this um, this special experience as a performer where you are so close to the audience, you know, you can, you can feel if you're engaging the audience or not, you can feel um, if people have trusted you on the story that you're about to tell. And it's, it's a really um, gratifying experience to have, um, especially in this day and age with live theater. Um, I feel very grateful. And um, we use a lot of um, really um, interesting entrances and exits thanks to the um, set designer Katie Oman and to Brendan um, his directing skills are are great so I've really been enjoying the whole process yeah you yeah, know and along with that and, and I want to say something about um, <clears throat> uh, Brendan's uh, directing skills I there you know we've done some exercises where you're just sort of feeling each other out and getting really comfortable you know, you know um, doing the work. And it's fun once, as I said, you start hearing the voices and you start playing the, the roles and then you, you, you find these little moments and it, that's, that's when you get to play. That's what I find thrilling about this production because we, we're all sort of collaborative in that. And it just makes it like, it's like a, I don't want to say a warm bath, but it's just really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's interesting you mentioned you guys mentioned the intimacy and the closeness. Uh, I, you know, I think um, it was in living in Cognigro, Jim Hammond's play that was just there, and the performance I was at, somebody's, not just that somebody's phone went off, but they played some sort of news or weather alert or something like that. I was and there. So, <laughs> and then oh. she did a great job of interacting with 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 the person, and, you know, rolled with it. But that's you feel like. And my point is that you feel like you're part of the show because there's not a bad seat and you're right there. Um, and so it's nice to to know that you guys as actors feel that way too, that it's it's kind of a, a, a group, um, you know, all going through this together. Yeah, totally. A shared experience. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that is that is the best thing about live theater. It beats all the stuff at home on the couch, you know, with the streaming and not there's anything wrong with that, but... You know, the shared experience is really what what I think separates live theater from anything else out there. I agree. And and, and I, I do want to say too, the willingness to to get comfortable is is important. Because I mean, if if you're not, you know, if somebody's squirming a little bit or doesn't uh, isn't relaxed, so to speak, or even just up for it, it can be it can be a little awkward. Basically, the the audience is one of the characters in the show. 
in a sense. How they're responding influences the way the show works from night to night. Um, so yeah, it's it's that's at least half the fun in my book anyway. So when I was so when I was doing research on the, on the play, I think one of the quotes I had was, "You're never sure if it's a mystery or a lounge performance. It's like it's kind of blurry." So um, I don't want you know no spoilers or or anything like that. But I'll start with you, Mark. Is it um, is it a lounge performance or is it a mystery first? Yes. All right. <laughs> good I assume is everybody's answer going to be yes. Because we don't we don't want to give any, anything away. Well, I mean, it's it's. I feel like for me at least, and it's probably as much because I'm here and very much the the lounge person on the show. Although we do have we get uh, we do have a a lady lounge singer, who's right here with us. It's it's. I I almost feel like I don't. I wouldn't be able to like draw a line. Where's the lounge act? Where's the mystery story? I feel like it's very woven together, which is perfect. Uh, which is the the way it uh, the way it should be. And it sounds like it's a very well. And you guys have kind of reiterated the very well written um, show as well. I really like the yeah. script and the work. During the rehearsal process we you know we've done all of this prep work we come in you know kind of with an idea of what is about to happen or how we think think things are going to go and then as we progress through the rehearsal process there was easter eggs for us as well just big epiphanies of things we had never even realized that were in the script right there and it's it's just like amazing how interwoven they are mm -hmm. um yeah i can't wait to see it i think i'm coming next friday night um i guess official so you have a thursday night performance is that that's official opening is thursday the fourth the or is thursday that a, is a preview a preview performance. okay and then the friday and then official night. opening night is the fifth yes okay yes. excellent here. very cool and i like i said i will be there uh i'll tell you what key city is such a little gem um it, it's a bit you know it's a bit of a drive at least for me i'm in i'm in port orchard so it's about an hour from uh, for me, but you know the the, the sorts of um, things that Denise is putting up there and, and that you guys are performing um, are are just wonderful. Um, and and whatever I can do to help promote them, I'm more than happy to. Uh, so before before we wrap up, though, I want to give each of you an opportunity. Do you have something coming up after this? What's what's next on tap, Crystal? Let's start with you. Um, coming up next for Key City is. Um, Sips and Scripts and Playcraft Originals, with which is a new works play, um, a play festival, which will happen in the month of May. It, it runs for a week. It's really um, lighthearted. Um, it's like a breath of fresh air with all of the new works and um, playwrights get to mingle and network. And there's also um, with Playcraft Originals, usually they're, uh, they're full length plays who are potentially going to be in the uh, season, the following season for oh. Key City Public Theater. So if you want to see how a script can develop, that would be your chance to do it. Excellent. How about you, Jeffrey? What's next for you? Oh, so this is an excursion back in for me. I, I've, uh, I've stepped, I stepped away for a little bit. So I was very, very happy. There was a few things that came up and this one really like screamed at me for a few reasons. Um, but uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see. I, I definitely feel like um, it was nice to get the muscles working again and, and realize, you know, it's I, like I said, even getting back to the comfort, it, it, you feel right at home. Everybody's a pro here and it feels mm -hmm. really, uh, really nice to sort of do it this way. Because, uh, boy, I tell you, um, it's been a pleasure. So we'll, we'll uh, keep, keep on the lookout. Well, I've had Alan uh, Fitzpatrick here on the show a few times talking about uh, a few different things and anything he recommends, um, you know, I'd be willing to uh, to jump in on as well. So um, how about you, Mark? What's, uh, do you have anything on tap after, uh, after this run? So this is April 4th through the 28th. So um, anything next for you? 
I do have a couple things lined up. I will be music directing at Second Story Repertory Theater in Redmond, uh, a relatively newish musical called Ride the Cyclone. Mm -hmm. And that will run June into the beginning of July. And then right after that, I'll go into rehearsals uh, for an independent production that is going to happen on that stage in Redmond in, in uh, September. And that's an original musical written by my friend Harry Turpin. And it's called Come On, Get Tappy. Um, about a tap dancing television star. Nice. I will say, if for those who have not seen Ride the Cyclone, I saw it um, in a, a, a community theater presentation over here in Kitsap last year. And it won our award for best um for best musical and, and a number of other ways. It is, it is a strange but wonderful show. It is strange and uh, lots of great music and one of the quirkier premises I have ever mm -hmm. come across for a, for a stage show. It's very Northern Canadian. If anybody has ever been, I, I spent some time up in Northern Saskatchewan where this was originally, you know, inspired and, and written and it's, it's, it's uh, right in line with, <laughs> with Northern Canada. <laughs> okay. hey. How about you? How about you, Brendan? Uh, after this, uh, after you wrap this up, anything uh, coming up for you? Um, yeah, well, kind of just to piggyback on what Chris has said, we're, I'll also be working on Sips and Scripts and play craft originals in either performing or directing um, as that. And then I also work in the, edu I'm a part of the education team here at Key City Public Theater. So We've got a lot of in-school programming happening, and then we have our summer programs that happen at Chetsamoka Park here in Port Townsend for youth um, students for theater education. So we, yes, we have summer camps, and um, they're on our website. And if you have, you know, a young one that's interested in doing theater, we still got some spots available to sign up. So yeah, and that's so important getting the the youth in, involved uh, in theater to make sure that we keep. The uh, the audiences uh, audiences coming you know year after year um, and inspiring them as well so that is that is fantastic work and Port Townsend is 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 a beautiful town it's a beautiful area I think we're turning the corner into spring I hope fingers crossed uh, <laughs> so no better place to go and spend a day and then just um, I'm going to implore people that they take in Gunmetal Blues as part of their trip to Port Townsend. Um, like I said, I, I believe Key City is just a gem uh, up there, and it's uh, undiscovered, I think, for a lot of people. And and hopefully, we can change that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. beautiful. So, uh, Crystal Holbrook, uh, Jeffrey Simmons, Mark Ro Robbie. Is that Rob did I pronounce that right? Yes, you did. Okay, and Brendan Chambers, the director of Gunmetal Blues. Thank you guys for joining me on and going behind the curtain to talk about your show. Um, and uh, I appreciate the time that you're taking. You're about to get into rehearsal, so I will let you go. Um, thank but you. But I do I, again. I do appreciate the time uh, for all of you out there watching. Thank you for tuning in. Going behind the curtain once more with the sound on stage. I am Greg Heilman, and until next time, I will see you at the stage door.